weeping may stay all night, but by morning, joy. I will turn their mourning into laughter and their sadness into joy. Let me hear joy and celebration again. I have said these things to you so that my joy will be in you and your joy will be complete. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. Do not be afraid. We bring you good news of great joy for all people. Joy. Rediscover the joy of Christmas. Merry Christmas from the Arthur family and from the new Grosbeck Parsonage of Sycamore Creek. It's Christmas Day, you're at your home celebrating, we're at our home celebrating. I mean, this isn't exactly how I wake up on Christmas morning, <laughs> but most of you aren't filming a message on Christmas morning in your home either. Christmas is either, well, it's, it's just, it's got to be just about done for you, right? Like, you have been to all of the Christmas parties, you've eaten all the Christmas food, you've opened all of the presents, You've rushed, 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 rushed. I was reading one Facebook post from one of the partners in our church about all of the things and the responsibilities and the parties that they and their kids have to go to and prepare gifts for and celebrate. And I just got exhausted listening to it all. And then throw in that we started Christmas like a week ago at Sycamore Creek with a spirited service, a sanctuary spirits, and then Christmas in a pub at Buddy's and caroling, and Christmas in a bakery, and Christmas in a dance party, and then a ton of Christmas Eve services, and here we are. Take a big deep breath with me. <sighs> and in the midst of all that, we have been trying to rediscover the joy of Christmas. What's been your overwhelming feelings? I mean, Christmas is full of all kinds of feelings. What's been your overwhelming feeling over this last week or two or month, this Christmas season? Take a minute to turn to your, well, family, because that's where you're at right now with your family. Or if you're watching online by yourself, put it in the chat. Let's talk about that. What's your overwhelming feeling this Christmas season? So what do we do now? What do we do now that Christmas is, well, mostly behind us? Well, let's go back and look at the Christmas story and let's think about how it's told. I mean, originally or usually this is how the Christmas story is told. First, there's the Annunciation from the angel to Mary that she's going to be pregnant. And then there's Joseph having an angel show up in a dream. And then they traveled to Bethlehem and Jesus gets born in, well, a manger. The shepherds show up. The angels show up. I mean, all of this stuff, the wise men several years later, that's how we usually tell the story. And it's, well, it's over and done. But there's actually more to the story, more to the Christmas story than just the way that we usually tell it. What we're going to find is joy in new life and the rituals that go along with new life. You see, it was Jewish custom and tradition that on the eighth day after birth for the parents to take the child, the newborn, to the temple and have them circumcised. To enter into the family of God in the nation of Israel through this ritual of circumcision. So Joseph and Mary travel to the temple and they offer the purification sacrifices and offerings, which is two doves. This is the offering that's given for poor people. 
If they were rich, there would have been an other offering that they would give. This little moment shows us the faith, the faithfulness of Mary and Joseph. You see, there was this faith tradition that they wanted to participate in and bring Jesus to the temple. Now, I think in Luke, including this part of the story of Jesus' birth, he's paying attention to another, well, not so much joy, but sorrow in the broader story of Israel. You see, Luke is writing this 20 to 40 years later, and this would have been after the temple had been destroyed. If you look really closely at this picture, you'll see that overlooking the temple at the time was the Antonio Fortress. So the Roman soldiers could have peeked into the temple at any time to see what was going on. In fact, at one point, the Romans built a gymnasium and a bath across the way from the temple. And this would have had regularly people walking through it naked, which would have been considered really unholy. I mean, (laughs) imagine somebody walking naked in front of our church. Oh my gosh! And yet there is a faithfulness of the Jewish people. Continuing this tradition, this tradition of new life, and the circumcision of Jesus eight days after his birth. So there's joy in new life, but there's also joy in waiting and longing. And we see this in the person of Simeon and Anna. When Joseph and Mary show up with the infant Jesus, Simeon has been waiting and longing. Anna has been waiting and longing to see the Messiah. Simeon doesn't want to miss the Christmas story, doesn't want to miss what Christmas is really all about. And in this moment, Simeon's joy breaks out in the song, and he sings what's known as the Song of Simeon. We've learned it in our family, and we've taught it to our kids because it's traditionally a prayer that's used at the end of the day. And Simeon's song goes like this. Lord, you now have set your servant free, to go in peace as you have promised. For these eyes of mine have seen the Savior, whom you have prepared for all the world to see, a light to enlighten the nations and the glory of your people Israel. These were the overwhelming feelings of joy that Simeon felt. And he asked to, well, hold Jesus. Imagine Mary's feelings in this moment. I mean, Simeon and Anna are pretty old, and Mary doesn't know who they are. Will they take good care of Jesus? Of course they will, because Simeon is overwhelmed with joy. And then he makes a prophecy, well, or a rather strange blessing over Jesus and Mary when he says this, This child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. Fred Craddock, the great preacher of this last century, liked to say that whenever you turn on a light, it creates shadows. And when the light of the world comes into the world, well, Jesus also creates some shadows too. Maybe you've experienced the same kind of piercing too. Life is full of those sorts of experiences, and you've been waiting and longing. There is a joy that can be found in waiting and longing this Christmas. We also find joy this Christmas in sharing with others. If Simeon sings, then Anna shouts. She says, At that moment, she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. We're told that Anna is an 84-year-old widow. Now that could mean one of two things. It could mean that she's 84 years old, which would have been really old in that day and age. Or it could mean that she has been a widow for 84 years, which means that she's over 100 years. She's been waiting a very long time. And she shouts to anyone who will listen about who Jesus is. Anna becomes the first evangelist. We find joy this Christmas through new life, waiting and longing, and sharing with others. Which of these three did you and your family find joy in this Christmas? Let's talk about that or put it in the chat.
So what do you do on the other side of Christmas to find joy? I mean, you've celebrated Christmas, you've gone to services, you've rushed, 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 and you don't want to miss Christmas. Like Simeon who sings and Anna who shouts, you want to find joy, the joy of Christmas. How do you keep Christmas from this point on? Well, Henry Van Dyke helps us. He was the author of the lyrics to Joyful, Joyful We Adore Thee. He lived during the 1800s and 1900s. He was a Presbyterian pastor and the son of an abolitionist. And he wrote this poem that I want to share from our family, our living room, to yours. There is a better thing than the observance of Christmas Day, and that is keeping Christmas. Are you willing? To forget what you have done for other people and to remember what other people have done for you. To ignore what the world owes you and to think what you owe the world. To put your rights in the background and your duties in the middle distance and your chances to do a little more than your duty in the foreground. To see that men and women are just as real as you are and to try to look beyond their faces to their hearts, hungry for joy. To own up to the fact that probably the only good reason for your existence is not what you're going to get out of life, but what you're going to give to life. To close your book of complaints against the management of the universe and look around you for a place where you can sow a few seeds of happiness. Are you willing to do these things even for a day? Then you can keep Christmas. Are you willing? to stoop down and consider the needs and desires of little children, to remember the weakness and loneliness of people growing old, to stop asking how much your friends love you and ask yourself whether you love them enough, to bear in mind the things that other people have to bear in their hearts, to try to understand what those who live in the same home with you really want without waiting for them to tell you, to trim your lamp so that it will give more light and less smoke, and to carry it in front so that your shadow will fall behind you, to make a grave for your ugly thoughts and a garden for your kindly feelings with a gate open. Are you willing to do these things even for a day? Then you can keep Christmas. Are you willing? To believe that love is the strongest thing in the world, stronger than hate, stronger than evil, stronger than death, and that the blessed life which began in Bethlehem 1900 years ago is the image and brightness of the eternal love, then you can keep Christmas. And if you can keep it for a day, why not always? But you can never keep it alone. So here's one final question for you or your family as you're sitting around the Christmas tree on this Christmas day. How can you keep the joy of Christmas every day? Let's talk about that. <laughs>